Ultras are easily the most popular shoe for through hiking. I've used them for the majority of my hikes and it wasn't until like close to like 1500 miles that I realized like how to make them the perfect shoe. Hi, welcome or welcome back. I'm Stella. I'm currently through hiking the Appalachian Trail and I'm actually on a bit of a zero. I did hike five miles this morning, but I'm taking the rest of the day off and I thought I would take this opportunity to talk about ultras. So like I said, they're one of the most popular through hiking shoes and I've spent so many miles hiking in them and I just thought that I would go over the pros and cons my experience with ultras and other footwear, and then also just some general advice that I have um, with all my experience. <laughs> okay, so let's start with the pros. Um, probably the biggest pro for ultras is the wide toe box. Um, as you hike more and more, your feet start to kind of expand and swell up and they occupy way more space while you're hiking than they do normally in normal life. So having a wide toe box ensures that your feet have room to expand and not like rub against the top or the sides and get blisters. Another pro about ultras is the zero drop um, footbed. So this is beneficial because it helps you have like a more natural stride and step um, some other pros are you can either get them in waterproof or not waterproof, depending on the season that you're hiking in and the trail that you're hiking. You can get them in high tops or low tops. They have really good grip and they're really quick drying. So some of the cons for wearing ultras on your through hike are that they're a little bit too wide if you have narrow feet. They do kind of wear out fast. Like sometimes they wear out, wear like holes in the sides and the tread, you know, gets worn down and gets smushed. <laughs> um, definitely by 500 miles. I think that's pretty normal, but still like a con. There's no arch support at all. And this is kind of silly, but they do kind of look like clown shoes. <laughs> um, so next I want to talk about my experience. <laughs> Prior to hiking the Pacific Crest Trail, I was doing a lot of like barefoot running. And so my feet had like, I felt like they were really strong and really well adapted to really minimalist shoes. And I was worried that I would have foot problems if I branched away from the minimalist shoes. So for the Pacific Crest Trail, I was wearing, um, New Balance Minimus trail shoes and they are just like so thin and flat and you can roll them up and they did have also they also had a wide toe box and I really really liked them but very early on in the trail I had terrible foot pain by like the last five miles of every day I was like sometimes in tears with how much foot pain that I was going through and I just thought everyone had that much foot pain and I didn't really think to like try out a different shoe until I hit mile 1500. And then I was like, okay, I should just try out ultras and see if I like them more. And I found them way better, way more support like and cushion compared to the Minimus. So I finished hiking the Pacific Crest Trail in I believe Ultra Lone Peaks, but I also did try out the Timps while I was out there. And then um, a few years later, when I began a section of the CDT in New Mexico, I had foot pain just like come back right away. And I just thought like, I it's just something I have to live with. Like anything beyond like 20 miles or more, my feet are in like terrible pain. Um, and then I met this other through hiker named Walking Man, and he was like, you should try out some super feet insoles. And I was like, okay. <laughs> he said like they made a really, really big difference for him. So I tried them out 
um, at the next town stop, I got them. And like overnight, my foot pain was like a world of difference. Like it made such a big difference. And I'm so thankful I started using super fate insoles. Um, because after that, I, yeah, my foot pain just like decreased by so much. So the super feet insoles are my secret to making ultras like the best trail shoe because everyone's feet are so different. And I think like finding the right insole for your foot can make ultras like the absolute best. So I have a pretty low arch, almost like no arch. Um, and so I didn't really think arch support made sense for me, but it actually like really, really helped. And so I used the super feet trailblazer inserts and you can just get them at REI and nor in other gear shops. It's a bummer cause it's an additional cost on top of an expensive shoe, but they just make such a big difference that I will not hike without <laughs> my super feet insoles. So, um, that's what I'm hiking with right now on the Appalachian Trail. I have the all weather high tops because um, this is kind of a winter through hike. Like I, I started mid February and my, and so I wanted something waterproof just in case I was going through snow. And I kind of knew I, I was most likely not going to be getting my feet wet by river crossings. Um, so the all weather which also means like waterproof made sense for me for this through hike um, and the high tops um, also made sense just in case it was snowing. Um, so that's pretty much like my experience with ultras. Um, I still do have some foot pain. I do a lot of like stretches and massages now and I think that like because I've been doing this for so long and I've hiked over 4,000 through hiking miles, my feet are more adjusted to <laughs> um, putting in miles and miles. So it's not necessarily just because I found the perfect like shoe combination that my feet are doing so much better. Um, but I do think that it makes a big, huge difference. So now I kind of wanted to talk about some general advice um, just from, from my experience and then from having through hiking friends with different types of feet. I think ultras work best if you have like a wide spread out foot and low arches. If you have low to medium arches, I would say try super feet insoles there's also like oboes insoles and there's like a bunch of different styles of insoles that you can try um but i'd say stand on them at the gear shop decide like what feels most comfortable and then try them out in your shoes and they'll most likely make a big difference if you have high arches i'd say and like more narrow feet i'd say ultras might not be the best for you unless you already have like orthopedic um, insoles that are very specific to your feet that would work inside the ultras but otherwise like if you have really high arches I would probably suggest trying La Sportiva Wildcats. Um, I've talked to multiple through hikers that have really high arches and they they try ultras and then they end up with like a lot of pain and just like things are not not comfortable and not supportive enough for their high arches so I think the shape of La Sportiva um, is just really supportive. Um, I've also seen like a lot of through hikers switching to topos, which they have a wide toe box as well. And so they're kind of like ultras, but they have a little bit more of a stiff sole. So I haven't tried topos for that reason. I'm kind of interested in testing them out because it's like, well, if my super feet insoles like leveled up my shoe game, maybe a whole new shoe will also level up my shoe game. But I'm just not at that point right now. My feet are doing well with the ultras and the super feet combination. So, um, topos could be good if you don't, if you wanna feel less um, flexibility in your shoe and you like more stability kind of 
and structure um, to the soul. Um, and so some general advice for all shoes is like definitely size up, like at least one size bigger, maybe two, so that your feet have room to swell up. You do not want your toes touching the top at all. Um, I suggest using the low tops and the ones that are not waterproof if you're hiking the Pacific Crest Trail or the CDT where you're crossing streams almost daily <laughs> and your shoes like need to dry out quickly. Um, waterproof shoes take longer to dry and then they're just heavier. So if you get the non-waterproof and the low top, like you're fine, like there's a lot of like flexibility and then they dry quickly. Um, and so I found those best for those two trails. If you are going through snow on those two trails, depending on the season, you could try the all weather ones or the all weather high tops. I feel like the all weather high tops are a good option for cold, for cold through hiking. Like I'm really glad I have them. And if it's really cold, I double up my socks with them, but they feel warmer. My feet aren't getting wet at all, which is so nice. <laughs> Um, I guess I'll also say like, for me, like my heel definitely slides up and down. Like I don't, I don't feel like my heel is glued to the back of the shoe. And a lot of times that's the advice that like gear shops will give you is that like your heel shouldn't move. But I've found that like my foot, like kind of sliding around and like kind of having space to move prevents blisters for me. Like there's less intense friction um, because it's like more roomy. So I'm kind of comfortable with my shoes like fitting like a little bit looser than you would think would make sense. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, sometimes like I wear my shoes like pretty loose and I don't get a lot of blisters. Knock on wood. Because <laughs> I don't want to get blisters, but um <sighs> yeah, that's it for this video. I hope you found that helpful. I hope that you learned some things about ultras and my experience and some things that you can try out that maybe you didn't think of um, for your footwear for your next through hike. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you're doing well. Say hi in the comments and let me know if you have any other tips for shoes for through hiking for other people or anything else you want to say. So <laughs> I'll see you next time. Bye.